Hello and welcome to Star Wars Obsessed Watching. I'm Richard and this time I'm going to talk about Ewoks The Battle for Endor. Ewoks The Battle for Endor initially premiered as an ABC TV special on November 24th, 1985. It was given a limited international theatrical release in 1986. So the last time I saw this movie was back in the 80s. I never got any of the video cassettes when it was released was never able to see it in any way. Yeah, never rented it ever since it was available on Disney Plus. Well, it was my opportunity to see it. First, I watched The Caravan of Courage, which was, eh, it was okay. It had some moments, but for the most part, it was kind of dull, kind of slow moving. But Ewoks, The Battle for Endor, what will that be like? I don't know. Let's check it out. All right, matte painting and title card. The movie starts with Sindel and Wicket frolicking in the forest. Why go? For one thing, my brother and I could school. School? Wicket can speak much better. These events are supposed to transpire before Return of the Jedi. So what happened to Wicket's language skills? I could be wrong. Maybe this does take place after Return of the Jedi? I don't know. Sindel's father, he's fixing the ship. So it looks like they're getting ready to leave. Sindel and Wicket are walking back to the village. Wicket senses danger. Now these marauders are attacking the village and they're taking Ewoks. What's up with that? Oh no, the mother is hurt and Mates fights back, fighting off these marauders. I'm sure it's going to be an exciting adventure with Mace and Sindel and the mother and the father mm -hmm. because, you know, that's what the whole first movie was all about, was family and togetherness and eventually get home and they're going to be able to leave Endor and go back home to wherever they came from. This is going to be exciting. They're going to fight their way back home. What the f***? They just killed Mace and the mother. Okay, the father's at the ship. He's attacked by the witch and the marauders because the marauder seems to be looking for some power that he thinks that they have. Okay, the father and Sindel hide and he's trying to get her to safety. Sends her away. Father is dead. Everybody's dead. Slaughtered. Togetherness and family all that. So Sindel runs away, but the witch stops Sindel and she is captured. A blurg! Sindel is sad that her family is dead. At least they're giving moments for that rather than the adventure just going and going and going and going. And I appreciate the movie for that. And then Wicket basically saying, don't give up. There's still a lot to live for. We must escape. So the Ewoks pull up a board in the wagon and Wicket and Sindel are able to escape. And they run from the marauders. Wicket and Sindel climb up a cliff but they get trapped in a cave. Marauders fall to their death. <laughs> Wicket awakens a creature and tries to fight it. The creature takes Sindel away. Oh no. So Wicket uses the glider to follow them. Sindel is falling to her death. There's no way she can survive this. Wicket catches her. All right. And then they crash land. They are far away from the Ewok village. So they go on a hike. So they rest and they hide in a tree. And then this creature appeared. This creature is named Teak and helps them find food. They arrive at a house and they think it's empty. So they take over, they decide to live there, and they clean and cook. This old man appears. His old man is named Noah. He's very grumpy, and he kicks out Sindel and Wicket. Oh, Wicket burns his butt. Comedy gold. All right, Noah lets them stay in the house. We're at the Terex castle and with the Marauders and the witch is trying to figure out how to use the power device. Terex doesn't know how to use it. So now we're on the next day and Sindel and Wicket follow Noah and see that there's a big spaceship. Noah reveals that he has been stranded for years. He came with a friend, but the friend went out to look for a replacement power source, but never came back. Noah had lost his friend, so he was very saddened about that. So he had something that he could relate with Sindel when he when he's comforting her because she still talks about how sad she is that the family is her family has died. I appreciate that the movie took time for that. We're back at the home and we're having a party. The witch is now posing as a raven 
and finds Sindel somehow. Sindel sees a blonde woman and approaches the woman, but she becomes the witch. And the witch abducts Sindel and rides her on a horse back to the castle. The castle is in a non-forest area with both of these movies, A Caravan of Courage and The Battle for Endor. The areas that they had to go to are not in the forest. Kind of like they're suggesting that the forest or the trees can't flourish or grow around bad people or bad things. I could just be, you know, overthinking it. King Tarak wants Sindel to make the thing work, the, the, this power thing work. But of course, Sindel doesn't know how to use it. So the witch and Sindel are imprisoned. Noah and Wicket and Teak arrive at the castle and the witch reveals that Noah's friend is dead. Noah and Teak and Wicket, they are able to get inside of the castle and then they find the Ewoks. They get the keys to get them out of their cells and they all escape the castle. Why did they capture the Ewoks? Where, what were they gonna do with the Ewoks? They didn't have anything to do with the power source. Were they gonna eat them? They arrive at the ship. They have to fight off the marauders. He figures out that the power source can be used in his ship and he starts up the ship. Ewoks using all kinds of different devices to fight off the marauders like the blaster rifle and this catapult. Very different from Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Uh, what did he say? <laughs> so Wicket gets caught in a trap and then Sindel leaves the ship to rescue Wicket and gets caught by the king. To rescue Sindel, Noah is forced to sword fight with the king. As they're fighting, Wicket uses his slingshot to and accidentally hits the ring with a rock. So I say it's an accident because Wicket had never seen the ring. They don't know anything about the ring. So he just happens to hit the ring. What a coincidence. And the ring is activated and turns the king to stone. The witch used the ring to become a raven. But now that the ring is destroyed, she will be a witch. Never more. Noah and Sindel say their goodbyes to the Ewoks and leave. This scene kind of threw me off because I forgot that back in the day that they used practical effects. So here we have actual model effect and it was so great to see. I just, I loved it because it looked real. It looked right there. It didn't look fakey like CG. Can look, it looked right. I love that. But with the events of the story, is it really the battle for Endor or is it the battle to leave Endor? I actually did like Battle for Endor, mainly because it's faster paced, it has a lot more action. It's just sad that for this story that Sindel's family had to be killed off, which really makes it the ending even more tragic because everything that she loves, gone. Her mother, her father, Mace, dead, and all the Ewoks that she had grown to love, like Wicket, she has to leave them. So everything that she knows is gone. And she's leaving the planet with this old man that she's only known for, what, a few days? Kind of really sad, bittersweet ending. But I did enjoy it. All right, well, that's it for Star Wars Obsessed watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You can follow Star Wars Obsessed on Instagram and Facebook. The links are in the description below. See you on the next Star Wars Obsessed. Who the hell is that? He's not in the movie. That looks like Mark Wahlberg.